we started talking a bit earlier about uh, about your about your mom and and that she wanted you to be an opera singer and all that. Um, for how we know you now, mm. what kind of role does your mom play in sort of shaping shaping your your artistic sort of tendencies as as a child or, or whatever? Um, well, first of all, uh, uh, genetically, obviously, it's a, you know I did come from her okay. body, which yeah. is big. So, yeah, I mean, uh, she had a massive role to play. She exposed uh, me to a lot of uh, performance, performance uh, uh, specifically dancing. Um, we taped almost every episode of Fame. <laughs> and uh, my brother and I actually used to watch it together. And I wasn't allowed to sing with him. He had to sing with the guy is singing, and then I could stop, rewind, play, and then I could sing on my own. But we weren't allowed to sing together because he told me <clears throat> I sounded like a garden gate. <laughs> but um, yeah, she exposed me to a lot of cool stuff, and um, specifically remember an artist called Tosi van Tonder. I don't know if any of you guys remember her. I doubt it. But she was incredible. She was out there. She was kind of like the Mary Vigman of back then, the 80s, I suppose, um, 70s, 80s. But um, and yeah, uh, and uh, just uh, musically as well, of course. Um, so and and she was my dance teacher. She's a she has a dance studio. So so you, so you did dance. Yeah, I, that, that was my main focus um, when I was younger. I started at quite a young age. I started at four, five, something like that. And um, mostly modern, and I did ballet, and I did flamenco, and I did contemporary. So it was Seapoint, Civic Center, I Stedfords every year. It was a thing. It was, a, it was quite an event, and it was taken very seriously. And um, Did you achieve? Were you, were you like... One of the yeah, a, I, a performers I, there. I won a couple of cups, cup, and um, my sister actually became the professional dancer. My sister was an amazing dancer. She, she danced with uh, a guy called David Krugel, amazing choreographer. Um, and my brother actually also, in his kind of mid twenties, he decided, I want to study ballet, so he started doing ballet at UCT, and he was a sportsman at school. He did a lot of, played a lot of rugby and tennis and all that crap. And um, I suppose the, the fame, <laughs> the fame got to him. And then he also went on to do uh, musical theater and that sort of stuff. So it was, you know, we were, we were the singing, dancing siblings. Now, take us on the journey then from, from that, from dance mm -hmm. as a child, and how you come to... Well, actually, hang on. You've got a funny story about your first performance ever. Yes, I do have a funny story. I think these people want to hear it. Um, this, this, this happened uh, at Hippoland. Now, Hippoland uh, is the name of my crash. In fact, it still exists. It's next to Emily's Beer and Snack. Right, on, on Kluve Street, opposite uh, Lifestyle Center. And... Um, we were rehearsing the Christmas play. I was five. And I was one of the shepherds because the Dominique's daughter naturally got the role as Mary. And, um, yeah. And then uh, we were practicing Still Enough, Silent Night. And my teacher kind of shushed us and she pointed at me and she did that. And I came over and she said, Would you like to sing? Still Enough. And I said, okay. So I did the Still Enough solo at the, <laughs> at the Hippoland 1983 Christmas play. Um, and for the event, my mother decided she would paint my toenails bright red. And I had the shepherd outfit on with bright red toenails and blue eyeshadow. It was awesome. That was my first show. That was my first performance. Performance, yeah. Fantastic. Okay, so there's that, and then interestingly, you you kind of lost 
interest in singing and performance mm. sort of when you were a teenager because the 90s were awesome for being a teenager according to yeah, you yeah 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 so how come you lost it you know i don't know a, just i suppose i put it into categories and then when i became 16 i was more i was very focused on dancing in, in high school so i just i just kind of forgot about it i did choir and stuff like that but i didn't and then i was more into listening to music and then um kind of in sonnet nine sonnet matric I, um, I was actually dating my first proper boyfriend, a proper boyfriend. And um, his mother uh, used to play a lot of old jazz records to me. And then I started singing along, and then I got a little bit obsessed with Ella and, and, and the likes of Ella and those, those uh, ladies. And I would listen to them all the time, all the time. And I was kind of like, I didn't really know what I wanted to do. It was after school, blah de blah And then... I just one day just got this urge to perform and I suppose I remembered well I, c I can sing and then I would just listen to Ella over and over and over and over and over again and then I kind of judged <laughs> my voice and I thought well you don't suck and I had a pretty impressive range so I, I got into jazz and I, I, I was hanging out with these um, colored jazz musos and I would do kind of like open mic stuff. And then, um, and then I started working at the shack. Um, at Anyone the know the shack? Anyone? Yeah. <laughs> I worked at the Blue Lizard, which is the little bottom bar with a cool poster of, of uh, Kurt Cobain, that one. And um, I, uh, I met a lot of musos, including you. Um, was me. Huh? Was, was you? Me. And, th and, and then I just kind of slowly started doing jazz stuff. And my first corporate was actually, um, uh, what's it called? Lucky Strike. Lucky Strike at Lucky the... Lucky Strike Party. Yeah, yeah. In sure. Goodwood. And I had a... Is that at Wingfield or something? Or yes. Or and I had a wh black and white striped dress on with a fly on my head and I sang Georgia. Hey, Georgia. Yeah. And that was with, uh, with the jazz musicians? No, it wasn't with no. the jazz musicians. No, that, that was for other stuff. But my friend Jay Lenton, he actually recorded some jazz standards on his guitar for me. So I, I could do a couple of gigs, like at, at the restaurant kind of scene. Restaurant kind of scene, like, like what? Like, well, what did that lead to? one of my first jobs I got was at Cape to Cuba. The lady that owned it, I don't know if she still owns it, Diona, she gave me a gig. So I walked around with a mic, and I had to dress up, which is a bit gay, but, and I walked around and I sang, and then I got a meal. <laughs> and then I also sang at the old Madame Zingara, the one that burned down. <laughs> yeah, and um, yeah. But the shack was a fateful job for you, because um, Very from, from working in that area, there were, like you said, open mic sessions and yes. stuff like that. Yeah, I yeah, know, it was divine. Totally divine. Um, actually, uh, the open mic sessions, that was really important for my kind of confidence and my, you know, exposure to different styles of music and, and musos. I mean, people like yourself, I remember. Didn't you play drums? Yeah, yes, you did. Sometimes. And then people like, I mean, I used to jump on stage and it would be like Kesava Naidu and Lee Thompson and Jed, Co Jed from, you know, like, uh, uh, you know, all the guys pretty much like gigging and, 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 and making a living as professional musos now. It's pretty cool. And, um, and also, at the bar, I used to get into trouble because I used to play a lot of hip-hop, um, pre-2000 hip-hop. Um, Which the shack is not known for. No. <laughs> and um, I met the Karikas brothers, the, 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 Greek, the Greek brothers. And um, we used to geek out about, about hip-hop, and then um, they told me that they, you know, they started this band called the Spindle Sect, um, also with Snake, Neil Reed, Reader. Reader. And um, so at one of these open mic sessions, they were like, oh, so, yeah, um, so we, we, we're kind of looking for someone, like, like someone to sing, and uh, like, can you, can you do something? And I grabbed the mic, and I did this crazy shit, and um, they were like, whoa, that's pretty cool. Do you want to come to the house next whatever day it was? And then I became the, the Spindle Sect singer. 
And then they, they, they taught me a lot about how to kind of construct rhymes and stuff. And then I, I had a little rap stint. It was great. Yeah, I remember that, actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What are you saying, Anton? No, 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 nothing. It's Don't just, judge me. No, I'm just kind of thinking. You know, if, if, if people had gotten to know you in later years and then you said, yeah, but I started as a rapper, that would have been kind of weird. Yeah. We seem to know, and with darkness it would grow, and so we burn our rags to light to feed our shadows to the night. It was hungry and we were slight, but we dared not lose our sight, and so we burn our to me.